going on everybody it's your boy d coming to you with another episode of the da experience i decided to come to you from what everybody likes to refer to as the red room people said they had mixed it so uh here it is it's back again i got a review for you guys today i went and saw death wish this weekend i put up a little poll to see if i should go see red sparrow or go see death wish um i got a little scared with both because of the fact that both had rotten scores on rotten tomatoes but i do it all for you so let's get right to it on a side note, the votes were very close. On my Facebook, um, they there was a 75% uh, said I should go see Red Sparrow. The one I did on Instagram, 75% said I should go see Death Wish. So at the end of the day, I figured which one might I enjoy more. So I went with Death Wish. I used to watch the Death Wish movies with my dad back in the day. This is pre-cable. Uh, I used to come on here in Baltimore, Channel 54. They used to be Death Wish 1, Death Wish 2. I didn't even realize until like the 90s that this series I got to Death Wish 5. Uh, the original series starred none other than Charles Bronson, who's iconic uh, in the role. That's what most people know him for, though I've known him from a couple of westerns and Dirty Dozen back in the day. But most people, when you say Charles Bronson, they think of Death Wish. So I heard they were remaking it a couple of months ago and saw the first preview. And I was like, all right, this looks okay. Uh, it starred Bruce Willis, you know, from Die Hard. And then it had um, the one and only uh, uh, Eli Roth uh, directing this, you know, from hostiles and cabin fever he usually does a lot of uh, horror and gory horror and type of stuff so i wonder how he was going to approach this one and his stamp was all over this movie um first of all let me say that this was a weird one it felt like something that probably should have been on netflix or hulu not something released in theater uh the writing wasn't that good um and unfortunately bruce willis just doesn't have that personality that charles bronson had back in the day he had this cool swagger about him he came off, as you know, he could be a little crazy and he could be a little, little like just straight up intense with his stuff. And Bruce Willis just didn't bring that. Most of his stuff, they had a light amount of humor to the role, uh, like Die Hard. And, but this one just didn't didn't do it for me. It didn't it, he didn't have that that I don't know that aura about him that made me think like this is a guy that could be doing this. Uh, he plays as a doctor whose family is um, attacked and he decides to take things into his own hands. Um, one of the upsides of the movie, like I said, is Eli Roth's way with doing uh, some of the gore. Uh, he uses a gun a lot in the first parts of it, and he doesn't shy away from when he shoots people. They don't turn the gun off. You get to see it. But then he starts killing people in in more crazy ways, like with a bowling ball or with a car jack or um, even just like using the st a staircase on somebody. And he becomes like this vigilante, per se. Uh, the other part that I found interesting is it has one of the weirdest casts in the world, like Vincent D'Onofrio, you know, Kingpin from Daredevil played his brother, and you had uh, his wife played by, I want to say, uh, Elizabeth Shue, who I hadn't seen since, like, Back to the Future 2. No, I saw in Piranha. And then they had Day Day uh, playing a very, very, very small role. It wasn't comedic at all. He probably had, like, a minute of screen time. So I was like, that's a weird part to put in this. And then you had Kimberly Elise in the role um and i was like saying to somebody earlier the next that day like you know i ain't seen Kimberly release in anything since john q so it was funny to see her in this movie uh and then she was playing a detective along with another detective who they never came off as serious they were like comic relief in a way but this movie just comes at a weird time with everything that happened uh with you know um sandy hook and uh, I can see how they kind of pushed the promotion down for this movie after that because it actually goes into how easy it is for someone to get a gun or not get a gun, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, all in all, I not say I was let down. It's just this movie was just forgettable. Uh, like I said, the writing is really bad and it's very hokey. They try to put a lot of puns in the movie. like They make fun of cops like talking about donuts and one of the cops is like on a diet and like, for some reason, this is an underlying plot, the whole movie, I guess, to make him more, um, you know, fan-friendly and acceptable, but it just, it doesn't work. Uh, the villain is kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm a bad guy. I, I'm, I'm slithery. I'm slimy. So everybody was pretty much one-dimensional, and it could have been done a lot more. It could have been a lot of action. It did, you know, set up this guy's past and his family really well. But where something that could have been 20, 25 minutes long, this went on for 45 minutes. I looked at my watch, and I'm like, okay, we haven't even got to the attack yet, and we're already almost an hour into the movie. And the movie's only an hour and 45 minutes long. After that, things kind of go pretty quickly. But I would like to see them do a little bit more of the vigilante stuff a little bit longer. I felt like as the Death Wish series went along in the movies, the original one, it got bigger and bigger. But to me, this seems like this was just something Eli Roth wanted to do to see if he could do, like, gory deaths 
without doing a horror movie, and it just fell flat to me. So if you're going to see anything, I skip this. Probably I'll go see Black Panther for the third time, if I was you, or second time or whatever. Uh, but maybe Red Sparrow is better. It got a little bit better of a percentage rating. But all in all, this one is one you got to skip. Uh, so that's going to do it for me today, folks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, um, leave comments below if you, of what you want me to go see next. March hopefully is a little bit better in the movies. So far, the last three months, we are in month three now of this. Um, I've only had like one great movie, and that was Black Panther. Everything else has either been forgettable or okay. So hopefully things get better. We got Pacific uh, Rim coming out. We got um, Deadpool 2 on Solo. Avengers got pushed back now to early April. But uh, let me know at the bottom in the comments what you want me to see next or if you saw this, what you thought about it. I'll see you all next time. Peace out. See you at the movies. Hope it's a good one.